Hi, my name is Avril Sorter and you're listening to Conducting Cisco Unified Wireless Site Survey. In this lesson, we're going to talk about how do you assess what your customer needs are. So this you do prior to doing a site survey. And the reason you do it is to find out what the needs are that your site survey must accommodate. And a lot of people think that doing a wireless survey is just about coverage. You're just going to go out there and make sure they can connect wherever they are. But in fact, there's a lot of other needs that you need to take into account. And that's what we're going to talk about in this lesson. So the first thing we're going to talk about is how each site is different and the reason it's different is because it's physically different and because the RF environment is different. And a lot of people say to me, have all the building and the floor, it's all identical. We've got the cubes in the same place and the office in the same place. So we should be able to use the same site survey result. And that's not correct because things are different. It may be just a filing cabinet or it may be the way people congregate, but there will be differences. That means that you have to do a site survey for every requirement because it's unique. So we're going to talk about those differences. Then we're going to talk about some of the customer unique requirements. And customers are very, very unique. So just because you've been out to, let's say, one school and now you're going out to another school doesn't mean that the requirements are going to be the same. For example, you might go out to one school and they want to deploy Wi-Fi cameras for security purposes and another school might require Wi-Fi in order to support their labs. So whenever you go out, the customer requirements are different as well. Once we've talked about that, we're going to talk about some specific vertical markets. And there are some specific types of deployments which propose different and varied challenges. And just to talk about that, we're going to talk about hospitals, manufacturing schools, and warehouse locations. And then one of the things that people doing a site survey find of incredible value is to use a series of forms to collect the customer information. And you'll be excited to find out that I've actually put together a collection of forms together for you, which you'll be able to download and use when you go out and do a site survey. So I think you'll find that particularly interesting and useful in this session as well. Now, let's start talking about why each environment is so unique. And your job as the person doing the site survey is to gather as much information beforehand so that you can actually design the best Wi-Fi network to meet your customers' needs. So let's first talk about the physical environment. And the physical environment is so very, very unique. You may be doing a site survey for an indoor environment or for an outdoor environment or a combination of both. The type of facility would be different, like you might be doing a hotel or a warehouse or maybe you're trying to get coverage in a park outside. So the physical layout itself, you can expect to be very varied. It's always surprising to a lot of people is how much the building material varies as well. So a building built in the East Coast and a building built on the West Coast, the actual material that's used is different. And so the propagation characteristics of your signal going through those different obstacles can vary quite a bit. So as you're doing your site survey, you're also going to collect information about the equipment that's deployed on that site. And this may be things like switches and routers, the cabling that's deployed. It can vary considerably between different sites. And even within a site, you're going to see variances between different areas. So if you go to one building, it may be very different from another building filing cabinets and shelves. You know, you often find a lot of metal shelves. If you're going into a medical facility, for instance, those shelves can be very, very tall. And sometimes they have a lot of uh, metal equipment on them, a lot of stuff that can actually impact your signaling. So it's very interesting when you go out to these sites to note down certain things like large mirrors if you're doing a deployment at a gym or again, if you're in a medical institution, shelves of equipment. 
if you're in a warehouse environment, you'll find a lot of inventory. And when you're doing your site survey, you can't always plan it when there's no inventory in there or when there's full inventory in there. You're really going to have to take yours to find it. And then you have to adjust your site survey based on the impact you think it's going to have if the inventory starts to diminish or as they start to add more inventory users so where are your users located what kind of users are they so let me give you an example if you were for instance doing a site survey at a hotel you can expect to see one or two users per room if you were doing a site survey for a school you might say oh there could be 20 to 30 people in a classroom and so that's going to make a difference as to where they are what the characteristics are when you're planning out your network and of course we've got interference so you're going to find interference sources they may be wireless cameras they could be cordless phones could be other wi-fi networks but the physical environment is going to have interference in it and that's going to affect your site survey as well. So again, all of these things can differ between sites and again, you need to have a site survey per site, per floor in a building, per different areas within a building. You always need to do a site survey because there's always something there that's different and not expected. Now, before you go out and do your site survey, I always like to ask the customer to send me something that describes the building. And I'll ask for the blueprints. Often blueprints aren't available, and so they'll send me a site plan. What you're looking at in this illustration is when I ask train signal, hey, send me your office layout. This is what they sent me. They sent me a PDF with a picture of where the offices are, where the doorways are, etc. And so I can use this and it provides valuable information for me to do my site survey. But if I had been given a blueprint, then I would have been able to see what are the walls made of? Is it glass partitioning? Are there plenium rated ceilings? It would have told me a lot more information that I would have been able to start to plan my survey with a little bit more detail. So always ask this ahead of your site survey. Get as much information as you can. Now, when they give me the blueprints and the site survey, I always take a couple of copies of them because when I actually go out and look at the site, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to capture information on it. And in fact, if the customer can tell me a little bit ahead of time, I'll start noting it down on the site plan so that when I get out there, I can actually verify this information. So for instance, I'll ask them, what is your existing infrastructure? Where are your switches? Where is your wiring cupboard? Where are the different outlets? Often you can see the power outlets on the blueprint. And I'll start to mark up this information prior to going out so I can actually verify it when I'm actually out on the site. Okay, on this slide, we want to talk a little bit about regulatory and safety issues when you're on site. And they're actually really very important. And I want to spend some time going through each of these. The first one, the spectrum regulation. With this one, the FCC in the United States and several countries around the world do this. They list radio frequencies RF as a hazardous environment. Now, the Cisco equipment is not classified as hazardous equipment because it doesn't exceed any of the legal requirements um, for body absorption. So it's not considered to be hazardous. But there might be some situations, particularly if you're deploying outside, where you really have to make sure that you've maintained your deployment within the regulatory boundaries. So if you're deploying an external antenna, potentially if you're deploying outside, really make sure that you understand the specular regulations and you haven't exceeded those stated mandatory requirements. So you might also run into some building codes. Now, building codes are there to protect the uh, the public and focused around general safety rules. 
and they come into play predominantly when you're deploying outside that you need to make sure that things are constructed right they're not going to fall on anybody etc if you're putting something on top of a roof or a street light or something like that but you can also run into some building codes when you're deploying some things internally as well so always make sure that you're aware of any building codes that apply for your Wi-Fi deployment. There could also be some industry specific regulation, let's say for instance you're working in the mining industry. You'll find that there are sometimes some safety regulations that are specific to that industry. It may force you to wear, for instance, protective glasses or protective clothing. It may even require you to have training before you can actually go out on site and do that deployment. So if you're doing an industry like a hospital, mining, always check out what are the specific regulations that apply to your deployment? Safety regulations, as I said, could be industry specific or they could be general. So even in an office environment, you need to think about safety. And here in the United States, you'd be looking at OSHA. So there are various safety regulations. And then you need to be aware of some of the data privacy laws. And those laws, as with the others, they vary in different countries. Uh, in the United States, you might hear of the one of HIPAA. And this one is the one that protects patient information. So if you're working in a doctor's surgery or a hospital or any medical institution, you need to be very, very sensitive to the type of information that's going across the network and how you protect that. The other thing I found, several people make this mistake when they go out and do a site survey. Customers will say, oh, I want coverage for my employees, and this is where they're located. And they do the site survey, and they do it cover all the indoor locations, and they won't have realized that the customer sometimes needs to support those employees outside. So, for instance, in this picture, there's a need to provide some coverage outside in the loading docks because they're actually taking their equipment, they're tracking inventory outside of the actual warehouse location and out into this parking area. Similarly, you might be in an office environment and there may be an outdoor area between two buildings where people sit and eat at lunchtime and you'd want to provide coverage there as well. So always check where your coverage is, indoors, outdoors, between the floors, etc. You want to make a note, as I mentioned earlier, about what the walls, etc., are constructed of. Um, and you don't always want to believe the blueprint. So the blueprint sometimes doesn't reflect reality. So even if you've got a blueprint, you still have to verify when you go out on site exactly what that wall construction is. So I want to give you an example of a site survey that I did years and years and years ago. And in fact, it was the very first site survey that I did. And it was in a corporate tower. So it was just office blocks with the elevator in the middle. And you'd think that'd be fairly easy. Put an access point effectively at every corner and away you go. Went out there, equipped all the stuff, went out, couldn't get a signal to go through the walls. It turned out that this corporate tower was bomb-proof, but none of that was reflected on the blueprints because of security reasons they didn't want anybody to know. And so none of the signals would penetrate through any of the walls because every wall was reinforced so be prepared to be shocked when you get out on site that even though you've collected this information, it may or may not be accurate. And again, a little FYI, if you're working outside, just like we talked about in the warehouse situation where 